but we do have this thing that we promised that we would do, which is kind of go around, pitch a bit, introduce ourselves one to another. So first, I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone. Welcome to the uh, 28th Doors Club Conference and the first Open for Business uh, track. Yay. Thank you. Um, so I will not uh, politicize or, or take much of the time. I will just skip on to the important part, which is we also have a pitch. So the event that you're at today is something that we wanted to initiate for quite some time, but somehow we always got tangled up in just doing the, the, the conference itself and enjoying the community and, and all the techie stuff that we do. Uh, so we actually want to try and have some kind of long-term sustainability for Doors Clock and for the uh, associations that organize it. And since it also always includes businesses, we would like to start doing things like this more. We'd like to uh, network more and we would like to kind of try and facilitate making partnerships and projects uh, happen in the region. So what Open for Business should be, in our opinion, is hopefully an, a track like this as part of the <laughs> as part of the Doors Club conference where we also get to interface with the community because we can obviously do that in it's an amazing community but we would also like to grow on it hopefully spread uh, or branch it out into a separate event so we would have two events per year one would be business oriented the other one would stay community oriented like this and then you know we could all uh, have both parts of, of, of the picture, you know, have our cake and also eat it. And hopefully that seems also interesting to you. And I hope that for each one of you, it will prove to be um, at least interesting to be here uh, this evening. So um, if, you're interesting, if you're interested in that, please uh, let me know and I will now go further and announce our gold sponsor Nemium and all the partners that they've also brought uh, with them and for that I would like to uh, announce uh, Marin, the CEO of Nemium to kind of take over and pitch Nemium as well as another partner. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Hi there, welcome. Oh, uh, no, wrong position. Just short, I don't want to, do, to, to, to uh, spend too much of your time. Uh, after all, we have uh, plenty of antique and some beers, and I would uh, prefer to, to spend more, more time over there instead of uh, talking. Uh, in short, Marin Bielsch, uh, director of uh, Nimium. Nimium is 21 year old company uh, from Croatia, uh, focused only on open source. So we don't have any SAP, the Microsoft, uh, Cisco, or whatever. Whatever is uh, connected and related to, to open source, it's our bread and butter. So the, from the very first beginnings, back in 2003, we, we, we became uh, the very first uh, retro partner, in, uh, not just in Croatia, but uh, in the area. But we are not uh, just a uh, company. Uh, we are also the SUSE partner. So if a customer wants to, to use the retro, we'll, we'll do it. If wants to use SUSE, SUSE, we'll do it. If somebody wants to use, to use Debian or whatever, we don't have any issues uh, with that. Uh, on top of, uh, of Linux, we do implement whatever it takes as long as it's open source uh, uh, published. So, all sorts of uh, databases, uh, mail servers, uh, DNS, uh, proxies, whatever it takes. And we are talking about uh, proxies. Lately, we became uh, F5 uh, partner, uh, but in segment of uh, Nginx. 
If you are talking about databases, uh, we are uh, EDB uh, partner. Again, the only one in Croatia and uh, the nearest one is uh, in, uh, in Ljubljana. Uh, we do some other, we do also have some other principles, but they are not, uh, as, as I don't want to, 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 to mention them uh, uh, tonight. Uh, altogether, 13 to 15 uh, people uh, on board. All of my the, the staff are uh, certified. And we, you all know that uh, it's, it, uh, this is not sort of, uh, of uh, next, next, next conversation that you have a certificate. We are talking about uh, real uh, exams and the uh, real, real effort that has to be put uh, in order to, the, to get the certificate. With all that, we covered uh, some of the very, very important uh, customers, both in Croatia and uh, abroad. We have some global customers and, uh, and uh, very interesting uh, projects and, and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so, some of our uh, princip uh, principles, as I said, Red Hat EDB F5. First of all, I will pass uh, to Dimitri Jovic from, uh, from Red Hat. He will continue. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Martin. Uh, like he said, my name is Dmitry Jovic. I'm from Red Hat. Um, I'm in charge for the Red Hat ecosystem in the region of Southeast Europe. So I'm taking care of partners like Marinis, and I know that he's doing also some other open source software, but I like to push him to do only our stuff, so. <laughs> um, well, I mean, everyone knows about Red Hat, so what we are known for, it's like Linux, but we are also there in Kubernetes, in automation, so OpenShift, Ansible, our top projects. Uh, not projects, top products, so. Um, yeah, Martin said uh, he's uh, he's uh, he's one of the best partners in the region. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's the best partner in the region. A very skillful people that he has, very good customers, very good projects that he's running, and uh, we are really happy to have him as our representative here. And uh, I'm glad that he invited me to say some things here. So if anyone wants to talk to me about anything. I will be here like tomorrow, today. That's it. So now we have uh, Dino from uh, from F5. Uh, so hello, guys. So I was a little bit surprised because we changed the language. I was expecting Croatian, so <laughs> I, will, I will try to adopt. Uh, so uh, as F5 is, I would say, traditionally perceived as an enterprise company. You know, I have a, uh, I would say, a mission to inform you or basically to make we make you aware that we are not only enterprise company. We are basically trying to connect the best of the both worlds. I would say the key word that is probably something that you have heard is something uh, a little bit greener than this uh, logo that I have, and this is the Nginx. Nginx is part of F5. It is, a, I would say, open source product. It will stay an open source product, and it's a perfect tool for us to basically, I would say, pitch what uh, we as a company are actually doing. So I would say from our perspective, I took some time and, you know, this is all AI generated, you know, in the last two hours. So mid journey is a perfect tool, but just to show you, you know, that we can really use everything that, uh, that is at our disposal, how to explain to you basically what we are doing. So as a, I would say, uh, something that we are calling application delivery vendor, vendor we are in charge to, I would say, provide the best possible infrastructure for your applications to run. So we are doing it in a, I would say, similar way like these heroes from Marvel comics. Uh, we are doing it pretty well hidden and with a pretty significant powers at our disposals. So what, what we actually do is we make sure that we put a nice, I would say, envelope around your applications to make sure that these applications are running smoothly. This envelope can be quite a lot of different things. It can be something very basic, like a proxy, like a load balancer that we are basically famous for, but it can be, a, I would say, a lot of other more complex security solutions like web application firewalls, anti-fraud, bot detections, you name it, we, I would say, kind of got it. Uh, 
The important thing is that we want to support you all the way through your digital journey. Because usually when you put an app on the internet, what happens if there is any kind of interest for this application, there is a pretty nice rush hour happening. You know, users are going after these applications and at the same time, it's your job to make sure that everybody kind of gets a smooth journey. So this is where you can actually rely. This is where we are combining the best of the world, both worlds. You know that Nginx is something that is run on, I don't know, 500 plus million uh, websites in the world. So this is where we learn how to do it. You know, Nginx is still under one floppy drive size. It's 1.86 megabytes still. So we kind of, you can run it on whatever you would like, you know, and we will keep it, we will keep it that way. Uh, the important thing is when you have the, I would say, taking care about delivering your application to the customer, the security is the next big step. Unfortunately, as we all know, even you that you that live in the open source world, security is never free. You know, it's kind of a, there is always a premium because it's a cat and mouse game. You know, you are always uh, fighting against the bad guys. And this is what we are actually doing pretty well. So we are able to, I would say, uh, create a nice envelope around your applications that can actually make sure that whatever bad guys are actually trying to do, that it's kind of a mitigated in real time in the best possible way. The third thing, and this is something that is extremely important today, is the speed. You know, this is, we are kind of lowering our thresholds, you know. If something is not working within I would say seven to eight seconds, we are immediately either switching or asking the question that there is something that there is something wrong with this site. This is where I would say the full potential and power of Nginx is actually happening. This is where we can really deliver and this is really where we can scale. And this is where we can, I would say, provide the best solutions for you. So whenever you are talking and thinking about deploying the applications, we usually come last but we have a full ecosystem, which is open source, commercial, hybrid. It can be adopted to your needs that can support you all the way throughout this journey. Because if you leave the security for the last step, it's usually a very painful process. And we would like to avoid this kind of uh, mistakes from the very beginning. So feel free to reach out. I'm glad to meet you all, <laughs> all here and have an enjoyable time. Thank you. Stay tight, sir. <laughs> I need to control. <laughs> uh, right. So, uh, Mr. Pavlovsky uh, is based in, in Poland, uh, Warsaw, and has traveled with uh, Piotr Kowodzie, who will speak tomorrow and tell about the technology, not necessarily uh, from only from EDB, but more in general. So in this uh, business corner, I would rather uh, focus on uh, business applications of, of, the, of the database uh, open source technology. Uh, EDB is the company behind Postgres project. Uh, EDB contributes about 30% uh, of uh, Postgres community code. Beyond uh, Postgres community, we deliver uh, add-ons, extensions, uh, tools, and uh, specialized versions of uh, Postgres, which make it appropriate for the most critical, mission-critical applications. Uh, you will uh, not find on the market really organizations uh, which do not use Postgres, or maybe uh, one of you know, please tell me, because uh, uh, Postgres, like Linux before, has taken taken the stage already, so it is used everywhere. Uh, not necessarily yet replacing the big players, but ask me uh, in the uh, after after this uh, <coughs> uh, introduction why why we know that the Postgres wave for this hype is coming. It is coming. Uh, I, I will share with you some data, but in general. I can tell you that uh, post, uh, that developers currently pr uh, prefer uh, Postgres as the most favorable 
uh, or loved or most uh, most frequently used project uh, database for new applications. Uh, you, I can share with you data uh, showing that the share of Postgres uh, on the market is, is growing consistently for like 8 to 10 years while the big players, uh, uh, incumbent players are flat or declining. So uh, on business side we address, uh, we are bringing the uh, most loved uh, database to uh, to address the following issues. We address uh, traditionally uh, <coughs> risk mitigation. So those who want to use uh, open source, they need to uh, have technical support, knowledge bases, trainings. We address also cost avoidance or cost savings. EDB is the uh, uh, player which delivers Oracle compatibility natively in the uh, database engine and all uh, tools and practices that are needed to migrate from, from Oracle. We address also customer success element of, of every business, so delivering uh, solutions and platform which, which allows always on operation of applications. So we are not talking today about uh, four nines, five nines, but about always on, so never down applications. It is possible with EDB, uh, EDB Postgres. We, uh, and we, uh, we also address the biggest uh, thought, biggest concern of every CIO. And who, who guessed uh, what is the biggest concern? Data corruption. Secu uh, security in general, yes, absolutely. And, and in parallel to it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, our, our experience is that that beyond security, the second biggest concern of, of CIO is acquisition and uh, retaining talent, best people. This is the the topic that takes most or maybe the biggest chunk of the of the time so the uh, environments the uh, corporate environments which use open source which use fast growing technologies technologies most often uh, selected by developers they become attractive for 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 people to work to work for them. Uh, I would be very happy to tell, to tell more to, to tell uh, details and I welcome you for tomorrow's speech of Piotr, 10 15, quarter past 10. Okay, uh, I want to welcome you all uh, again. Uh, I'm one of the organizers. Uh, my name is Vedran, and I'm the president of Croatian Linux User Association. Um, Alongside uh, Slobor, who is from HR Open, our two NGOs are responsible for this conference for how many years now? And I won't be long. Um, I don't think we have anyone from Lenzo, right? Dominic or Marco, I don't think they, they were not able to. Hmm? Yeah, they'll be here tomorrow with a pretty cool presentation so, and workshops, so you will. Uh, meet them definitely. Uh, I want to welcome our open strategy partners who. Ah, oh. is it picture? Yeah, you, you can do it. Is this thing online? Uh, I don't think yes, it is. It's live. It's just for your doom. Right. Whoa, okay, so no glasses. And I have to type out the whole URL because. Yeah. Partners.com. I will accept all of my own cookies. Thank you. Uh, so, well, apparently not. <laughs> really want it. Okay. Um, 
For SEO optimization, we are a B2B content marketing agency for tech products and service companies. And that's SEO optimized, and it's not how we fully identify ourselves, but it helps people find us. Um, all of us are involved in highly complex technologies that are difficult to explain to other people who don't do what we do. So, um, my business partner and I, my business partner has an MBA and a ton of strategic education and experience. I've had about 2,000 beers with people like you um, and another 1,000 beers with agency owners. We came together and we made an agency where we work with our clients on a strategic level um, to understand your needs and how we can support them with communication and what insights we can gather from our analysis. We plan stuff, then we write a lot of words, make videos and audios, and because we come from an open source background, we're very happy to do workshops, we're very happy to give away our templates and show you how um, we work. Uh, our main value proposition for agencies, product companies, and open source projects is connecting engineering with marketing and sales. I came from a background where technology marketing wasn't always the greatest and wasn't always true. And I know that we're all allergic to that. So we have several methodologies that connect what we call your technical truth to your business value. And we have um, data, um, uh, data methodology based on, on the DIKW pyramid, data information knowledge wisdom, um, to turn that into actionable marketing content, communication content, developer relations content, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and essentially, if you know you have to do content but you don't have time, we can do that really well. Um, if you need to get your communication started quickly, we're good at that too. We know the landscape, we know open source, we know CMS, we know hosting, we know, uh, you know, um, containers, we know many things. Um, we're flexible, we do a lot of the, you know, you can hire us and um, we'll act like a whole extended external marketing team for you. Um, and we've, what I'm really, really proud of is that we've been in business as open, uh, OSP since 2017 and my open source friends and peers who also started businesses you know, I've been able to help them grow their businesses, come out to market, do better, sell more, get more adoption for their open source solutions, whatever, um, saving them time so that they can go and do what they need to and not torture themselves through blogs. Um, you know, this guy uh, is the project lead for Typo3. He also had an agency that was just a word of mouth agency for 20 years, but they wanted to grow. So we took it from, oh, Benny has some people that work for him to like, a group of the brilliant people that they are, and they're doing very well with it, and we love it. Um, this guy's the project lead of Sulu CMS. Um, th with them, they decided to double their budget with us instead of making an internal marketing hire, and I'm super proud of that. We've got a ton of interesting ways that we do it. Um, essentially, I think the last thing that, that I could say without giving you the whole entire pitch is um, everything we do is, I have to really want it, Yes. Um, everything we do is systematic and modular and um, we're very process oriented, which means we try not to make the same mistake three times. We take our opportunities to improve our working when we can. Um, and we, ha we take a moral and ethical approach to communications. And I think that's important to a lot of us coming from our different um, communities. Um, we don't write negative copy. We um, we mm, operationalize empathy to, to create developer content that's great for developers, business content that's great for uh, business people, um, and essentially we, we collect the, like what your product or what your project does. We make a bunch of logical groupings so that there's a unified set of information. You're the, we collect information from the product owner, from the designer, from the client, from the developers, so that everyone has access to the same language and the same thinking. This helps unify teams, this helps unify communications, and we really have fun doing it. Um, and uh, yeah, along the way, um, I'm an old open source guy, so um, tomorrow, one of my talks will be about why we need to be evangelizing open source again, and the other one is gonna be about this methodology and um, communicating the the value of what you do to non-technical stakeholders. Hooray.
with you, Jeffrey. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to call representatives of the Vico Foundation. All right. Um, so thank you all for being here. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be very short, yeah. and then I'm going to pass it along uh -oh. to Patrick. Um, so we are both here representing the Geco Foundation, and I just want to say that we're kind of representing the community and business and how those things could be bridged together, right? So we know that, that, that as people develop and they innovate and they put projects into the business world, it's good to, where, where obviously you can all make money off of that, uh, where, where basically uh, you kind of can come across some problems as you grow. And so we're kind of here to look at being a solution for that. Um, I myself, I, I manage the Open SUSE project. Um, I work for SUSE, but uh, as an example, we work across the ecosystem. Now, if you're using Red Hat, you're using Ubuntu, you're using SUSE, for, for us, for, for, for me and my perspective, when we're talking about this, it doesn't matter. You're using open source, and that's the most important thing. So it, we are trying to be here to help you, and we're trying to build this. It's a relatively new foundation. So if you want to hear more, you can come and see, see me tomorrow, us tomorrow, yeah. for the talk. And um, that's as short as I'll be, unless you want to add anything. Well, um, so Geekhead Foundation is a not-for-profit enterprise in, based in London, and it's basically a hub to collect funds from donations um, that are not necessarily linked to a corporate. So if, you, if you're a, a, a donor, you don't want to necessarily donate money to a listed company that is on the, you know, on the um, New York, New York you know, the NSC. <clears throat> you want to put it into a open source project where the, where the people who can facilitate that and allow, you know, to, to channel your funds into the, the products that we, or the projects that we approve of. Um, and that kind of really is the central thing and that's something that we got from some issues we saw with open source projects, not naming any names, but um, there's, there are problems with the corporate saying that we are supporting this business and other people want to donate, but there's no, not even a bank account where you can donate and not be assured that that money is not going to go into another company, in, into the company that's founding the company, founding the project. So we put an independent, not-for-profit, and we'll be dispensing funds accordingly. And that's kind of all I've got. Sounds good. I'll let yeah. you have the, the, uh, the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I can get that level of applause, it'll be really good. Because <laughs> I've got almost nothing to say. Isla is now just me as a consultancy. Uh, we've got 35, I've got 35 years in technology, about 20 years in Linux, um, hosting. Uh, an open source cloud in two data centers um, with uh, banking uh, <clears throat> with customers of the end users of the bank, uh, Swiss banks and British banks. Um, we've done massive rollouts of um, end user systems for Bank, bank of Ireland, and I can mention, or Ireland Irish Bank, and I can mention them because we've got a, a um, uh, just basically a, a case reference, case study on, on what, they, what we did. Some of the the communications lines are being 64K or 28K doing updates of all those systems on a weekly basis. And from that, we built some products that, that allow us to do migrations of that scale or much higher. And that's kind of me. Uh, okay, so the next company is called Flying Penguin. Uh, I'm one of the owners, there's two of us, so the company is uh, based in Split, Croatia. Uh, we have, I would say, two separate uh, parts of the company. One is doing, uh, one uh, part of the company which my partner is handling is doing uh, game development and advanced rendering uh, in, partner with, in partnering with AMD. 
And the second part of the company, which uh, I'm in charge for, is doing uh, DevOps. Um, we are a pretty small team, but with a lot, a lot of experience, because everyone in the team is over 40. I'm the youngest person on the team, so I love to call us uh, grandpas of IT, uh, because we like everyone has at least 20 years of experience in, in Linux and in systems engineering. Um, our clients are mostly uh, EU and US based, varying from small 10 15 people startups to um, enterprises with over 6,000 uh, employees. Uh, we do basically everything DevOps related, and we're only using uh, open source tool, tools. Uh, like creating everything from uh, development environments to highly scalable production environments, basically anything that needs to be done for a certain customer. Uh, that's it. Our website is flyingpenguin.tech. Feel free to check it out. Hans <laughs> from Hope Innovations. Thank you. And we also pull up. A website, fortunately, my is a bit shorter name. Uh, so I'm Hans Arad. I'm owner of Open Innovations. We've been around uh, for more than 20 years, and we specialize in data management, data processing, uh, data analysis, uh, using and contributing back to open source tools. So we're a very big fan of both as well, uh, of Nginx, um, of Ansible, of <coughs> SourceStack as well. Why not? And um, yeah, we're also a long term partner for HR Open uh, and those work. So, my esteemed business partner, Sebori, CEO of Open Innovations as well, uh, present. So, we mainly specialize in highly regulated environments. So, pharma, uh, energy, finance, but our main competence is pharmaceutical environments. We do uh, data processing and analysis for patient data, uh, we do medical imaging. Uh, innovation using AI and ML for <clears throat> uh, detecting uh, carcinogenic developments or for dentistry applications. Uh, we work with uh, European Horizon projects for federated machine learning. Uh, but essentially, we can work with any type of data that you have. So our platform is essentially an app generator. It uses PostgreSQL as its main database, and we generate the metadata of the uh, the application into our RAM models, into REST API endpoints, into UI uh, elements, but also in full end to end test uh, cases, which we need for the pharmaceutical domain. So we verify all the data integrity measures on a database level, on a REST API level, and also on a UI level. Um, our solution has already went through several FDA and EMA inspections uh, for customers of us. Uh, without any major findings, so in the pharmaceutical domain, that's actually pretty awesome. Um, with regards to open source, we have a pledge that 10% of our annual revenue goes back to the open source projects that we work with. So that's not just bullshit, we also just pay. Um, I'm originally from the Netherlands, I'm based here in Zagreb. Uh, the majority of our team is both in Zagreb as well as the Netherlands, as well as setting up a branch office in San Diego, US. Um, so, happily open sourcing around the world, and very happy to be here at Doors Work again, which is 30 years of Doors Work, although we'll only celebrate that in two years, so we have three years of more parties uh, ahead of us. So, thank you for listening, and take a look at our and I, and um, yeah, let us know. <laughs> Ah, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so the next company is Smart Account. Please welcome Andre. Hello. <laughs> I probably have the simplest product to pitch here, and it's mostly the wrong kind of people I'm going to pitch to because I can only pitch to Croatian people and Croatian companies, but Smart Account is, yes. Uh, Smart Account is a new kind of bookkeeping service. Uh, it started from frustration with existing bookkeeping services that are available on our on our market today. Uh, they don't support you in your business. They don't understand how you do business. 
they don't know anything about software or uh, what what kind of services you can and you should offer and here we are so we are a team of three people uh, I'm the developer and I have two bookkeepers who are very well versed in the laws of creation taxing and uh, tax services which is uh, a feat in itself but we are also developing uh, a product that will help you manage your company a bit easier and it's built completely with open source stuff it's built completely locally and uh, hosted on our own premises it is secure data is uh, encrypted at rest we use postgres uh, we also encrypt stuff in postgres so you can rest assured that your business secrets are really business secrets and are not just papers on some shelf where people walk around uh, we are launching in a year so uh, we need to still build all of the parts of the product i want to have built before we can start accepting customers but feel free to talk to me today if you have some bookkeeping needs especially if you're an smb uh, we're perfect but we can take a challenge for a bigger company like some of you here so that's it thank you very much when are you expanding to germany uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, have, I have a feeling that the German tax is a bit uh, harder to understand the Croatian Really? And the last company is Technoethical. Is the representative here? Yeah. Yeah. You can hold it for the Hello everybody, oh, my name is Tiberio Turburano, I am from Romania, Bucharest, and um, I want to, to present to you my online shop, which is called Technoetico. It's a rather unusual shop that sells only uh, completely free uh, GNU Linux uh, compatible um, hardware, uh, starting with uh, Wi-Fi adapters, uh, Bluetooth adapters, cards um, and also laptops with completely free BIOS uh, based on core boot and uh, uh, phones uh, based on uh, with uh, replicant reinstalled which is uh, based on Android but with all the non-free or Google dependent uh, apps uh, and libraries removed and replaced if possible. Um, what uh, I do practically is uh, buy secondhand uh, hardware that is uh, still available and compatible with uh, completely free drivers uh, in Linux and um, I refurbish them and then sell them to customers around the world. Um, I have a few customers in Croatia and I'm looking to expanding. <laughs> Um, I'm also looking to rebranding uh, to emphasize collaboration with uh, other projects besides the ones that I mentioned uh, and also because it is harder to uh, type it down, <laughs> uh, the, the technological <laughs> brand. Uh, thank you um, and if you have questions I'll be around. I think that's it for today. We have the venue for another what, 45 minutes left, right? Yes, more or less. Uh, we're not really hard for us to okay. run out, so we, can we mingle. definitely can work on those beers and, and fluids <laughs> that need to be taken care of. <laughs> so enjoy. Thanks to all the pictures. Thank you all. <laughs>